Uh, welcome, everyone, uh, to those of you who are here and those joining online, the majority as usual these days, but particular thanks to Martin Shannon. Uh, Martin is a uh, partner at Heavy Industry and FDI at Grant Forge in Ireland. He's been in that role for, I think, a month. Um, before that, over a good number of years, excuse me, I'm slightly out of breath after bounding up the stairs there. Um, he, as you all know, ran what is arguably the most successful uh, government agency uh, that has existed, in, perhaps in the history of the state, uh, IDA Ireland, uh, over a difficult time and then a, a possibly easier time with different challenges. Uh, so he's going to talk to us today about some of those challenges, uh, some of the opportunities as well uh, for such the, the, the sector that is so vital for the economic success and prosperity of the Irish economy. The floor is yours, Mark. Please. So, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, delighted to be back at the IIEA. Uh, thanks to, to Dan for uh, the invite uh, here today uh, and to address you. As the uh, title suggests, I am going to speak to you about whether FDI is a continuing opportunity or a growing uh, challenge. So, spoiler alert at this stage, I'm not going to keep you in suspense. I believe foreign direct investment is a continued opportunity for this country, but we face many challenges in continuing to attract uh, and grow the existing um, multinational companies that are here. Since Ireland opened up to trade and investment uh, from the 1950s onwards, foreign direct investment has been overwhelmingly positive for this state. It has moved us from a country that was inward looking, protectionist and poor, uh, to a modern uh, society with a globalized high growth economy. I'm going to remind you of some of the contributions that FDI make uh, to the economy, because I think it's really important that everything else that is said is put in that, uh, that context. There are now close to 1,800 uh, multinational companies operating here. Those companies employ directly over 300,000 people and have a significant employment multiplier effect on the economy. So there are lots of indigenous jobs dependent on lots of multinational jobs. Exporting multinationals um, spend over 30 billion directly in the economy every year, In uh, but 19 billion of that is pay, and then the rest is materials and services procured from Irish companies. Capital expenditure is a bit more lumpy, but it runs uh, to about between seven and 10 billion per annum over the last uh, number of years. Multinationals are responsible for about 315 billion worth of exports. And those companies that uh, we're talking about uh, are responsible for 80% of all corporate tax take in this uh, economy and an estimated 40% of all income tax collected in the economy is from employees of multinational companies. These are extraordinarily strong figures in the context of a small economy like Ireland. Our industrial development model has been to attract inward investment, uh, to support Irish companies to export and to help them scale, and um, for the state to invest in innovation, research, uh, and, and development. And, and, and that industrial model has worked, and the FDI part of it in particular has worked. The single biggest threat to that industrial model and the FDI model that we've employed in this country over recent decades, in my view, is complacency. Ireland has no inherent right to the foreign direct investment that we win on an annual basis. The clue is in the fact that it has to be won. We have to be competitive as a country in order to do that. In my view, too much time is spent hand-wringing about whether we are too dependent on FDI or whether corporation tax receipts will continue. Where the balance of focus and discussion should be is on how we ensure that global companies see Ireland as a competitive and compelling location within which to invest. The recipe for um, winning investment is known. Ireland has excelled in this uh, space. Uh, however, I feel that success is now taken for granted. It appears that a future or alternate scenario where we do not have such investment is absent from the general consciousness. 
for those of us who grew up in the uh, 60s, 70s or 80s, uh, we know what that alternative uh, looks like. Uh, and those um, those memories and uh, associated uh, pictures uh, are not pleasant. They're not pretty. And when we take, in my view, job um, growth for granted, we have lost our way. Um, there is so much to be optimistic about. FDI most recently was responsible for bringing us out of the uh, global financial crisis. Um, most recently, even uh, in the last um, year, we have seen, uh, sorry, during the pandemic, uh, FDI drove the economy. In the last year, even during significant um, reset in particular sectors, FDI has continued to perform with really substantial announcements, even in the first six months of this year from my former colleagues in IDA, and substantial in the sense that substantial capital investment, substantial employment associated with them, and uh, in many cases going into uh, regional uh, locations. So I'm going to talk a little bit just about, I suppose, what matters. And uh, in the first instance, the, the global economy matters. We are one of the most global globalized economies in the world. Uh, the challenges, I think, have been well rehearsed, but just quickly, global political uncertainty, countries and economic or political blocs seeking uh, strategic autonomy. Uh, it is an open question as to whether globalization will continue, is stalled, or is, is indeed in reverse. If there is to be further globalization, what form will it uh, take? Regionalization does seem to be on the rise. Ireland is heavily integrated into global value chains. A deconstruction or redesign of those value chains could present both opportunities and um, uh, challenges. Th there is uh, the prospect that Ireland and others will increasingly have to come down on one side or the other in a polarized world. And we have very significant geopolitical issues, obviously, on our own doorstep in Eastern Europe with the uh, Russian invasion of uh, Ukraine. High inflation and higher interest rates to combat that inflation will have an overall depressing impact on consumer um, sentiment and demand and economic growth. Uh, and those impacts will vary across the various sectors. And we're seeing that already. Just yesterday, we've seen the ESRI downgrade its forecast for growth uh, in Ireland based on subdued levels of growth in exports from uh, the pharma and chemical uh, sector. Having said that, uh, you know, I think that report also points to how strong the underlying growth in the Irish economy is. And we have a situation where um, we have historic low uh, unemployment uh, at, you know, hovering around 3.8%, um, you know, unimagin unimaginable to those of us that were looking at this back post the financial crisis and trying to figure out how growth would come back into uh, this economy. We've just been through uh, the technology sector reset. I say being true, it's still ongoing and it is very painful for those who are directly involved in that and those that have uh, lost uh, roles. I think it's important to say that technology sector is diffuse and you know there are many elements within that from um, uh, semiconductors to software to the platform companies, which are probably the ones that have been most impacted in recent times. Uh, I think it's important we distinguish between the short-term challenges for that sector and the long-term uh, challenges for this uh, uh, long-term growth prospects for the sector and i think those long-term growth prospects remain uh, strong there are lower um, global flows of foreign direct investment uh, global flows of foreign direct investment haven't yet returned to pre-pandemic levels so we're not yet back at 2019 levels of um of foreign direct investment globally. So that means we, Ireland, like others, are fishing in a smaller pool and have to, um, in order even to maintain the amount of investment um, that we've seen previously, one has to win market share. Uh, as identified by the National Competitiveness Council, uh, the cost of doing business here uh, is increasing. There's no, uh, I think, great uh, surprise there. Uh, and some of that is driven by global um, um, issues, but some aspects that are also domestic issues. And again, disaggregating the two, I think, is important. You know, the twin challenges of digitalization and climate action present, again, both opportunities and challenges. And I'm going to come back to that in a little while. What we do domestically is even more important. 
and, and we have challenges here too. These challenges can be characterized as carrying capacity issues of the economy, resulting from the failure of infrastructure, keeping pace with the faster than anticipated growth of the Irish economy since the global financial crisis and indeed property bubble in late 2000s. Um, those issues, they include housing, energy, water, and, uh, and general infrastructure indeed, and, and issues relating to planning uh, and, and the delivery of infrastructure, uh, both for uh, government infrastructure and for the plant and facilities of multinational um, companies, and indeed indigenous companies, I should say. More than anything else, this runs the risk of curtailing new investment and the expansion plans of uh, multinational uh, companies. I mean, to put it simply at the moment, we do not have all of the options that we could be offering to um, investors and that we should be offering to investors available to us because of those infrastructural um, constraints. We also have increasing issues relating to the supply of talent, although relatively speaking, I think Ireland has done well at aligning the output of our education system with the needs of companies and attracting highly skilled talent uh, to Ireland. It is imperative that our third level sector is appropriately funded to deliver the required output uh, at the required level. It is our ability to attract, um, sorry, to grow in the first instance, our own talent, to attract talent and retain talent that will dictate our success in the future in both growing Irish businesses and the ability to attract FTI. The cost and availability of housing is a serious deterrent to those that wish to make a home and work in Ireland. And, and this is and will act as a drag on, on future investments and the ability of existing investors um, to grow uh, within Ireland. Much of the political discussion I expect between now and budget 2024, 2024 will be on the size of the budget, on the balance between tax cuts and additional expenditure, and within that, who gets what. Unfortunately, there will be much less interest and attention on the measures designed to keep the economy performing at the extraordinarily high levels it has been performing at. That is where all stakeholders should be focusing their attention. We need to execute on those issues that I've referred to in order to continue to make progress economically and societally, because ultimately it is what will dictate how big the pie is to share in the future. FDI has options. If Ireland doesn't deliver, companies can go elsewhere. Ne uh, and albeit that FDI has proven extraordinarily sticky, I think that is important um, to say. Never has the global competition for FDI been so intense. Um, while Ireland continues to outperform relative to our size, other uh, countries are making themselves more uh, attractive. Within Europe, we have seen countries like France, Spain, Portugal move up the FDI rankings. We see the levels of uh, subsidy supports for FDI across uh, the globe increasing, uh, particularly significant supports for large scale um, investments in manufacturing, semiconductors, green economy projects. It is a very, very crowded uh, marketplace at this point. We have seen countries that have not demonstrated a sure footed approach to their economy suffer from lower levels of greenfield investment. And by contrast, Ireland continues to be seen as stable politically and economically and very stable from an enterprise policy perspective. And this is a very significant strength and its importance should not be underestimated. There are other big issues that we need to consider. Uh, the future of work will be different. Uh, I spent last week in San Francisco, um, a city that has seen its challenges exacerbated by the pandemic. It is struggling to rejuvenate its uh, city centre and the increasing number of empty office blocks tells a story of employees who have not yet returned to the office. And in some cases, perhaps never uh, will. This is in contrast to the um, objectives of their large employers who once occupied these buildings and who believe that some attendance at the office is required for reasons of productivity or training or developing one's organizational culture, and indeed also for the mental health of employees. The experience is different uh, in Ireland with higher levels of office attendance. And I think we can see the increasing level of office attendance in, in Dublin. 
but some of these issues we will also have to grapple with. And there's much thought required, I think, as to how we design cities and towns for employers and employees in the future. There are always going to be new opportunities and new sectors and subsectors and with new products and services uh, coming on stream. Uh, if the leaders of the technology sector that I met and listened to last week are to be believed, we are all going to be supported by our own personal EI in the future, which will be emotionally intelligent. I'm very much looking forward to this, I have to tell you. Um, while apps like uh, ChatGPT have raised the consciousness of what might be possible, all agree, I think, at this point that we're only scratching the surface of, um, of this. The use cases for AI are likely to grow and grow. And Ireland has to remain nimble in order to avail of the opportunities that developments like this can deliver. We have done a good job, I think, uh, and I am somewhat biased here, uh, in the past, it being very fast followers uh, in areas of technological innovation, and we need to continue uh, to do that. And of course, there will be impacts from these new technologies. Uh, there will be new jobs created that we haven't uh, and can't imagine at the moment, and there will be displacement of existing jobs, and that will need to be uh, managed. We also need to use our voice in Europe to ensure that the new, uh, new areas are appropriately regulated in order to protect citizens, while at the same time proportionately regulated to allow for innovation. There is huge potential in areas, uh, coming back to the twin transitions in areas like offshore wind. The offshore wind opportunity has the ability to both meet our, meet our growing domestic energy demands, help us to meet our sustainability targets, provide new export markets and could drive a whole new wave of industrial development, again, if captured properly. Again, nimbleness uh, and speed of execution is what will dictate our success or not in areas like this. Hopefully, as you can tell from the picture that I am painting, I believe there are opportunities, any amounts of risks, and our success will um, be dependent on our ability to meet those challenges that I've outlined with haste and execute on the plans that largely are, are, are in existence. And um, Ireland has done an amazing job in, uh, of industrial development over recent decades. Uh, the attraction of FDI has obviously been at the center of that. There's every reason I believe that we can continue to attract significant investment and I remain very optimistic. Thank you very much. Thank you.